Hey, hey, everybody. It is Dr. Nicole Bonner with Healing Hands of Nana Hawken. Number one question that I always get when people look at their x-rays is how did this happen to my spine? That is by far the first question that I always get. And most people are very surprised to see actually how bad their spines look on an x-ray. So how does the spine become injured, damaged, or traumatized over the years? So the umbrella answer to that question is stress. Stress, 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 stress. Raise your hand right now if you do not have stress. Is there anybody out there Anybody at all that does not have stress? The answer is probably not. In fact, when I say the word stress, you're probably thinking of emotional stress. You know, the kind of stress that we've been all going through over the last two or three years with all of the changes happening in the world. But there are actually three types of stress that cause damage to your spine and to your nervous system. The first stress, and we call in chiropractic, by the way, we call this the three T's, three T's, your thoughts, trauma, toxins, T, 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 thoughts, traumas, and toxins. What does this mean? Well, number one is your thoughts, okay? That's your emotions. That is the emotional stress that most people think of when you say the word stress, like I'm stressed out right? I'm stressed out. I'm nervous about uh, this interview coming up or I'm nervous about taking this test if you're still in school, right? So those are our emotional stress. Somebody cuts you off on the parkway. You get like emotionally aggravated, right? Um, God forbid you have a death of a loved one or a divorce or what about all of these changes that have been happening in our world over the last year, inflation, gas prices, you name it, we are in the midst of probably one of the most stressful times, emotionally stressful times in um, the history of healing hands, I would say. And healing hands has been around for over 20 years. So emotional stress definitely causes uh, problems to the spine because when you become emotionally stressed, our muscles subconsciously contract. They hold our body. It's like the brain goes into protective mode and scarcity mode and the body kind of curls up, tightens and compresses. So when the spine, when the muscles around the spine tighten and contract, they pull the spine out of its normal alignment or out of its normal position. Now, because the spinal cord which is 90% of your nervous system outside of the brain, because the cord is inside of the spinal bones and actually attaches to the inside of the spinal bones, because it's inside of there, when the spine gets pulled out of alignment, so does the cord. And when the cord gets pulled out of place, the cord has to stretch, it gets tight, it gets taut almost like taking that little knob on the end of a guitar and twisting that knob where the string gets tight and tense, right? So you know if you tighten a a string on a guitar and you go to strum it, the sound or the vibrational frequency that comes off of that string is different than when it's relaxed. Well, the same is true for your nervous system and the way that your nerves work, okay? The tighter the cord, the slower the nerve impulse travels over the nerve. And when the nerve impulses slow down, well, you can imagine since those nerve impulses run your whole body, then your whole body begins to slow down. And then the body can't handle stress at the level that we, that it's supposed to, it can't adapt to its environmental changes and, and, and disease starts to, um, starts to be created inside of the body. 
The second T is toxins. So it's thoughts, toxins. So there are over, there are hundreds of thousands of toxins in our air, in our food, in our water. And so there is no way to eliminate all of the toxins. But you, in recent years, you've been hearing this big push for go green and be clean, right? So that's what that means. You know, we want to eliminate as many toxins as we can. Now, we just went through, you know, two to three years of massive toxin overload between the unwanted shot that and jab that people are being forced to get. And obviously, the virus that has been traveling throughout the world over and over and over and over again, you know, that's a massive toxic load on your system. And so the body has to be strong and it has to be resilient. And your physical body has to be able to adapt to those toxins. And if it's not, it will break down. It will become disease. Now, one of the things that we're seeing is that Clinically, in clinical practice, this is what we're this is what we're seeing. Now, you're not going to hear this in mainstream media, but what we are seeing, not only in chiropractic offices, but in medical offices all over the world. Some of my best friends are medical doctors. One of my great friends is a top-notch, world-class cardiologist. And so this is what we're seeing in clinical practice: is that people who got the shot. Um, number one is having an increased toxic overload with increased inflammation in the entire body, but specifically in the heart and in the nervous system. But then the people that got the shot and then COVID, it was like an explosion in the body of toxic, of toxic overload. So the body has to be prepared to handle this type of stress. Now, the third stress is trauma. Trauma starts from the moment, this is physical trauma, and physical trauma starts from the moment that you are on the planet. Literally, the birthing process itself, or in the birthing process itself, an obstetrician can use up to 120 pounds of pulling press pressure on a little baby's neck in order to release it from the womb. And if that doesn't cause stress to the nervous system, then when the child learns to walk and has falls and, and falling off the trampoline and falling off their bicycle and sporting injuries and all of these different um, physical traumas to the body, causes stress to the nervous system. And then that weakens the body and it causes the body to fail at adapting to the environmental changes, environmental stresses that we are under. So it becomes like this snowball effect where like stress causes weakness to the nervous system, nervous system causes weakness to the nervous system causes weakness to the body. And then a weak body can't handle the stress. And that's why you see people, um, maybe even yourself, where like, like you start it feeling stressed, you start it feeling fatigued, you start it not feeling great, you start having aches and pains. Then next thing you know, like the body can't handle a simple cold. And now we have autoimmune and now we have myocarditis. And that's why you see that gradual increase, or I should say decline, because you don't see that, de that, that gradual decline in, in overall health. So Anyway, hopefully that helps you guys better understand what's happening to your body in relationship to what's happening in our environment and what's been happening in our world around us. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We're more than happy to answer those questions for you. We love and appreciate you. Talk soon. Mm -hmm.